Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of a time of a pe- episode of a time to please Allah. <laughs> I'm losing my uh, and um, alhamdulillah. I'm happy to uh, to welcome our dear brother and guest, uh, brother Nabiyo. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair for having me. Welcome again. Yeah. By the way, I'm not uh, I'm not Ismail. If anybody noticed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alhamdulillah. Um, how are you? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Thanks for coming again on a short notice. It's my pleasure. My pleasure. Alhamdulillah. Um, and welcome everyone. If you're just joining us today, if you've never heard of our show, um, I think this show is, is somehow very different than all the other shows. And also by the feedback that we get and the questions that we get, subhanAllah, I mean, it's just amazing. And they're all, you know, we're not, no doubt, please do not, say we're putting down other shows or anything like that. Alhamdulillah, I think a lot of people are doing amazing, amazing shows. However, I think we're, we're touching critical issues that are of, like very, you know, concern uh, today in the 21st century, just your average Muslim, uh, you know, that they want to know, they, they want to understand, they want within Islam, uh, within what's happening around, you know, themselves in their families, in their societies. And um, we're getting a lot of feedback, alhamdulillah, and people, you know, opening up and asking questions. And today I was getting some, subhanAllah, some questions, and you're just, you know, you're, you're, you're shocked and that, uh, you know, that uh, people are, you know, really hungry you know, to understand and to know and to, to, to move forward in, in, you know, in this deen. And um, today we have a very interesting and very important topic. And um, we, I think it's, subhanAllah, a very deep topic. And uh, it's the topic of uh, dua and the etiquettes of, of dua, right? And asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And um, I think it's such a personal thing, you know, that everyone have to, has to understand. And a lot of times, I remember myself when I first entered Islam, I found that um, prayer was, was a bit dry, right at the beginning because you know you don't understand you're kind of like you know doing some movements and uh, you know a lot of people are coming from and it happens I've, I've talked over my you know I've been Muslim now for more than 10 years and I've been, I've been working with new Muslims and a lot of new Muslims have said the same thing right say like okay he's teaching me some imam is teaching me this or some person is teaching me that and I'm not really understanding I don't know what you know he's coming from like Christianity or something we're always speaking to God he's like I want to speak to God right and I used to tell him like Who's stopping you, you know? Like, who's stopping you from, from speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And I said, this is dua. You invoke Allah. You speak to Allah. You, you call upon Allah. And, uh, and that's, that's something very personal and something very uh, deep that the Muslims need to understand uh, what it is mm-hmm. and what are the etiquettes of it and how to really, you know, I would say, touch the heart, you know, and really, be, you know, become something very, very deep that they really feel and they're affected by, you know, because our prayers should affect us. This is something very important, that our prayers should change us, our prayers should, um, you know, really, um, you know, get to the root of the problem and take it out, right? And, and, and we know that Allah SWT says, uh, salata tanhan, uh, al munkar, and that salah should stop or you know kind of protect us from mm. this uh, evil things and, and bad deeds and so, so on and um, so let us get to this again I want to remind our viewers that uh, we want to hear from you we want to hear um, maybe a story when you made a dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered it 
you know, in like right away or some, like something really cool that we want to hear from you. Nothing crazy, <laughs> but, but something really nice, you know, that you want to share, that you have an experience with the dua. And, and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll share some of my experiences, subhanAllah. And um, that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he responds sometimes like right away. And sometimes, you know, there's other, you know, this, those are like nice stories, right? They're like you ask Allah for something or you think about something, you know, you're kind of making a dua, but, and then all of a sudden, like the next, you know, minute is like the dua is answered, right? And then there's those where you like, you're asking Allah so much and it's not coming, right? It's just not coming. And then like five, ten years, you know, further down the road, you realize that had that dua been answered, it was not, maybe not good for you, right? Mm. So like, I mean, we want to hear from you. Our number is on the screen. Uh, give us a call, inshallah, and hit us up on Facebook. And let us get to the, uh, the actual topic. Brother, what is dua? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid al-Awaleen wa al-Akhireen Nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een So basically, I, I just wanted to touch on uh, the fact that you, you spoke a little bit about salah and just as you, as, as you, as you enter into Islam, a few, few, some people feel it's a bit dry. And I think if we teach people that it's salah in and of itself is a form of dua, is a conversation between you and Allah, and it is an implicit um, asking for everything good and protection from from everything mm. f from everything evil. So, if if people sort of get the sort of spirit of salah in the beginning before learning the actual uh, details, I think mm. they'd feel a little bit more <coughs> no doubt. more at, at 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 home and at ease when they're when they're making salah, especially at the beginning. Like you said, you don't understand what you're saying. Maybe you're reading from a piece of paper. Maybe you have to read the translation, and doesn't doesn't feel right, you know. Um, so, just wanted to mention that point, and then. Basically, a dua is linguistically it means to ask, mm. okay. Uh, and a dua is a calling on someone. It means uh, it's it's uh, in Arabic it's called an nida. You call mm. on someone, and the technical meaning is that you call on that person, and it's it's accompanied with a request. Mm. And this request it could be just a, a a general request that is not an act of worship, or it could be a request that is is an act of worship. Right. Now, when it does become an act of worship is when you're asking uh, the person that you're asking um, something that is exclusively Allah's. Hmm. Okay? And that particular act of worship is called Adwa ul ibadah And all acts of worship should be directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hmm. alone and no one else. Hmm. The, uh, the dua that is an act of worship uh, for example, I can say, uh, Jibril, may I please have a glass of water? Okay, now that's a dua. I'm asking you, I'm calling on somebody and accompanying with a request. I'm asking for a glass of water. Is, it, is that an act of worship? Hmm. No. No? Of course. Why? Because you can, you can, it's something that anybody can do, isn't right. it? Uh, but if I say, for example, Jibril, please forgive my sins. Mm -hmm. No? Well, can I do that? <laughs> no, that's sure. <laughs> We'll talk I'm not about doing that. that yet. We'll talk. <laughs> I'm not doing this Careful. as an example for the uh, for it, the. It for is the an example. It's not. I'm not asking uh, Jibril. Okay, uh, so that's that's dua. The definition of dua in general. Now, with that, we go to the actual manners of of making dua. Now, the reason why I'm I'm talking about more about the manners and and not about the technicalities of uh, of dua itself mm -hmm. is that. Uh, a lot of the times, well, a lot of people don't really know the the etiquettes and the manners of Islam. This is something that is uh, quite lacking in in our society today. And we know that the Messenger of Allah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, said about said about so him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, "Wa inna la ala khuluqin azim." You are upon a great, a great character, a great form, a great uh, a behavior. Hmm. And uh, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so says. I was only sent to perfect good manners, mm. and he also said, he also said there is nothing that is heavier than on the scales than, uh, good, than good manners, mm. and he's reportedly also said that there is nothing more noble than good manners, mm. and he even guaranteed a house in the highest part of paradise for the person who strives to perfect his good manners. Mm. So, so good manners is something that is something 
absolutely fundamental and essential to uh, to Islam, mm -hmm. something that has always been stressed in, in, in the Quran and, and, and in the teachings of the Prophet So we want to know what are these manners, you know, every every aspect of life that we, we go through, there are certain manners to it. There are manners to going to the bathroom, there's manners to eating, there's manners to getting up in the morning, to going to sleep at night, uh, when we enter the home, when we leave the home, when we greet people. Manners in dealing exactly, with each other. Exactly, you know, manners between each other. And the most important of all of these manners, the highest of all of them, is our good manners towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is our, our Rabb, our Lord, who created us, who, who brought us up, who provides for us, who manages our affairs. So if we don't show good manners to the one who created us, that is the worst form of injustice. And that is... Uh, uh, and that's why I want to say something here, because uh, going back to how, how I started, right? Um, the salah, a lot of people, as I said, they find sometimes, you know, at the beginning the salah to be hard. And as you said, teaching them, you know, what it really is before just teaching the movements and really understand, or maybe even in parallel, you know. Mm. Um, uh, but, you know, I found that, again, some people complain that it's too difficult and, you know, Muslims and new Muslims, or people are coming back or starting to practice, mm. right? Uh, they're, they're trying to, you know, they're saying, well, it's difficult, you know, you have to do this, and you have to make wudu, so much preparation. Or so. And I always find it strange because we prepare so much for, you know, for our jobs, for going to work. If we have a court meeting, if we have a bank appointment, something like that, an interview, prepare so much, you, sp you know, for school, you prepare so much, you make sure you're in your best, right, you have the best of manners, you even almost put up a show, right, to impress uh, an interviewer or so on but with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we find it difficult we find it uh, burdensome that you know oh man you know uh, you know why all these things that we have to do why dua has all these you know uh, things that are requirements why the salah have all these requirements you know I find it hard and actually it's not hard but it's it's how people approach mm. you know the issue that 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 matters you know yeah I, I totally agree. And expanding on that example that you just gave, uh, if you would imagine that you have a, 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 an audience with the, the president of a country or the king or the ruler, you would, you would do things a little bit differently than you normally do. You would wear your best clothes, you know, you'd, uh, you'd groom yourself. You'd wear probably some uh, some good scent, you know. When you meet the when you meet the ruler, you would you would be on your best behavior. You would uh, you would praise him. You would do all these sorts of things, and basically, you have to apply this sort of mindset to whenever you are having a having a conversation or meeting with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, either in your salah or in your dua in general, because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is the, is the King of all kings. And going on with the the first and most important aspect of uh, of the the adab of du'a, the manners of du'a. The, obviously, the most important one is at tawhid, and that is directing this act of worship and all of acts of worship to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala alone. There are many examples of this in the Quran. For example, in Surah Al-Jinn, uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is ordered by Allah to say, uh, say. I only call upon Allah and no one else, and I don't associate any partners with Him. And the way it's worded, it means that it, it indicates that if you, if you call on others besides Allah, that this is, is associating partners with Allah. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, the syntax of the ayah means that you're supposed to call on Allah alone and nobody else. And if you do call on somebody else, that is an act of, act of polytheism, act of shirk. And in Surah Yunus, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He's ordering the Prophet again, Don't call on anyone who can neither benefit you mm. or harm you. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, then you will be one of the zalimeen. Mm. A zalimeen here is a reference to a person who has committed shirk. major, major mm. shirk and, and kufr. And this is an act of, act of disbelief. There are numerous, numerous examples. I found um, there are about close to a dozen, maybe more. Ayat in the Quran, unequivocal, unequivocal ayat that that show us that we have to direct this act of worship to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala alone. And if we go against that and direct it to anyone else other than Him, that this is an act of disbelief, and we will be among the people. Of this the is an, an issue, though, that uh, it's is facing the Muslims today, though, right? I mean, a lot of Muslims are calling 
other than Allah or calling Allah and someone else, right? And they try to sometimes, and it's a it's an issue of great uh, you know controversy, right? Mm -hmm. That you know, and they say, how come it's nothing? This is something that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala allowed, or they try to justify it from from different cases. But Subhanallah, I mean, the the ayats, these are these ayats are very clear. They're like muhkam, you know, and they're exactly. very clear. One then Masajillahi Falata Durma Allahi Ahad. I mean it's very clear that mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the the Masaj belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't invoke with Allah anything or anyone else. I mean why would people want to call other than Allah? And and what effect does that have on a person's dua? Um basically they would feel that for example that all of us in general, we know that we're all, all sinners right. and we feel that we're sort of unclean. Maybe we're not worthy to ask Allah. I mean, this is one of the reasons why people would leave the salah actually when they're uh, immersed in sins, when they keep on sinning and keep on sinning. Eventually they're like, what's the point? Why should I? Why, why would, why and this is I the pray? worst yeah. thing you can do. Exactly. It's the worst thing you can do to leave salah yeah. thinking that I'm too bad. Exactly. That exactly. Allah will not forgive me. Exactly. Subhanallah. Exactly. Last one, what Allah says in uh, Surah to Zumar. Say to my slaves who have wronged themselves, um, do not despair of my mercy. Hmm. I forgive. Uh, I forgive all sins. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And this is uh, the scholars say about this that this is the most all-encompassing of the mercy, uh, verse that demonstrates the all-encompassing mercy of Allah. So it, it's like basically they they feel uh, they lose hope. They lose hope in hmm. the mercy of Allah and in the promise of Allah. So that's why they would uh, they would sort of direct their acts of worship if they do this to somebody who is allegedly uh, pious and has a, a good relationship with Allah as it were. And he will make dua to Allah for them almost. Exactly, exactly. Like so this. it's like a, a wasata. Yeah, uh, if, you, if you've ever had to, uh, I mean we live in this country, <laughs> sometimes it, help, it helps. Right. This is the way they do business I suppose. So this is this is wasta wasta between you and uh, between you and Allah subhanahu wa taala because you feel that you're not worthy of asking Allah. And this is and not allowed. This is not al not sure. not allowed in Islam. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala says, um, "What's the?" Uh, uh, he, he says, "Say so 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 make du'a." Where is the where is the verse? <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I have the verse here. No problem. Let, let's look for the verse. Shall <laughs> I? And, and your Lord says, "Call upon me, I will respond yeah. to you." Exactly. Exactly. What a beautiful. Uh, let's uh, take a break. Inshallah, we'll come back to this uh, topic because I want to talk a little bit about, the, about this verse and the whole issue of people losing hope and not uh, going for it. So we'll take a break. Inshallah. Again, I want to remind you that our phone is on. Uh, our phone number is on the screen. Give us a call. Tell us your experience with dua. Tell us, you know, something cool that you've, you know, you've experienced in your life. Um, maybe a good story when you ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He answers right away. Maybe something that Allah delayed for you, but it was better for you. Jazakum Allah Khair. Inshallah, we'll see you just in a bit. Salaam Alaikum. I will spend on you, he says. We can't just take knowledge and keep it as information. We have to transfer it into action. When he got up, he said one thing. Did the people pray? In Hajj, for example, the, the, the primary example of how multiculturalism really looks like, all equal. I've got a dentist in Canada. Even though he's ripping holes in my teeth, he's got great akhlaq. I love visiting him. Identify the issue. Analyze it. Challenge it. And then try again. Because if you fail, big deal. Try again and keep trying. If I think I lost my ablution, but I'm not sure, 
do I have to make wudu again? Is it allowed for Muslims to visit the graveyard or is that shirk? Am I allowed to say Juma Mubarak to someone? Can I get to know a sister before marriage? I have so many questions and I feel that I've just reached a dead end. If only I could find someone trustworthy to answer my questions. Someone who speaks based on proof from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. To please Allah, a chance to gain reward. I will spend on you, he says. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome back. This is a time to please Allah, and we are joined by our special guest uh, today. I mean, uh, sorry. A special guest today. <laughs> I'm, I'm the guest, I'm not, the, the, I'm not the host. Uh, uh, sorry, the and, host. Uh, yeah, Alhamdulillah. Brother Alhamdulillah. Ismail Bulak. Who's that? That's me. Assalamu alaikum. Like salam You made a dramatic entrance. I did. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It's been a couple of weeks, I think. Yes. Have I been gone for a couple of weeks? Yes. I was actually on the way trying to work out what... I know why I wasn't here last week. I was trying to think, why wasn't I here the week before? I can't even remember. You had what? something... I had coming. something, yeah, possibly, subhanAllah. Yeah, as the Hayat dunya So I didn't really catch what you guys saying as you... As a, I took a wrong diversion today. Uh, Alhamdulillah. We're talking about uh, dua. And I caught the, the last bit actually. I, I did kick, uh, I caught the part uh, where Nabi was fishing for his ayah. <laughs> and, and a bit before that actually, to be fair. Okay. And we're uh, talking, okay, we're going back. But anyway, I want to remind the guests uh, and the viewers that they can give us a call. Uh, the number's on the screen. We're talking about dua. And uh, I, just before we, we talk about, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أَدْعُونِ يَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ I want to give a small story. That when I before I was uh, I was uh, when I was non-Muslim, and when I left Christianity and I was thinking of you know becoming Muslim, I remember very vividly that I I was very confused, and I basically I knew how the Muslims pray, and I made a sujood, and I asked Allah, I said, you know, Oh God. I said, just uh, just guide me to a straight path. I need guidance. I'm confusing. I know I'm studying Islam. I left Christianity. I don't know. There's so many things in the world. Just show me the right path, you know. And subhanAllah, like, I feel that that was, you know, like the answer to, to that dua was, was me becoming Muslim. Like, I really felt that. Like, there was, it was something special about, it was just like, a, like I just had a, an argument with someone close to me at that time. And it was just like something so desperate, you know, that I felt like I was oppressed almost. And I just fell on my head and I, and, and I basically uh, made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on the same token, the brother who used to give me da'wah, when I prayed with him one time, a long prayer in Ramadan, and you know, one of those like where you, you bring a, new Muslim, a non-Muslim to the mosque, and like, hey, I want to pray with you guys. And like, come join us, right? And it was like Tarawih prayer. It was like long. <laughs> and I was saying that. I'm like, Man, this prayer is long. But uh, he said to me, when I became Muslim, he said, remember when you came for that Tarawih night? It was like Ramadan and all that. He's like, I made the dua and sujood. And you were next to me. And I said, oh Allah, guide, you know, guide this guy. Like, please guide him. I know he's like sincere or something. And please guide him. Subhanallah. So just like this couple of uh, stories and about that. Because I, I, I don't know, it's like very personal. You know? Like I really felt... Of the the effect of, of those uh, uh, those duas, subhanallah. I think uh, we have a phone call. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, uh, brother, how are you? 
السلام عليكم. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله. Yes, brother, go ahead. I'm calling from Nigeria. Yeah, I just want to ask, when is the best time to make a dua? Okay, inshallah. When is the best time for one to make a dua? Okay, we'll answer that for you now, inshallah. We'll hand that over to you, actually, as the guest, because yeah, right. you have all the mat you have everything ready for this. We were uh, we were going to cover that a little bit later on. There are actually, uh, I think there's like 19 best times to make dua. <laughs> nice. So I'm just I'll just list them I'll just list them for you uh, because without the evidences because they're all based on authentic uh, authentic evidences inshallah uh, I'll just give a few of them so uh, if you wake up in the middle of the night Subhanallah. okay uh, wake up in the middle of the night for any reason you say la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu yuhyi wa yumit wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir uh, Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa allahu akbar, wa la hula wa la quwata illa billahi illa ali illa azim. And then you say, uh, Allahu maghfirli, Allah Allah or you make dua, uh, your dua is accepted insha'Allah. And if you make wudu and pray two rak'ahs, Allah. Uh, Allah will accept your salah. That's the first one. When you're drinking Zamzam water, okay, so you make dua because uh, Rasulullah said, Zamzam lima shuribalah. <laughs> yeah, Zamzam is what it is drunk for. Uh, during Ramadan, uh, while you're fasting, when you're breaking your fast, when you're praying Taraweeh, in general, at any time during Ramadan, Ramadan is a blessed month because all the doors to Jannah are open and all the the doors to Hellfire are closed. And also br breaking your fast. Yeah, exactly, is when breaking your very, fast. Yeah. Uh, wha wha when you're inside the Kaaba, is a good time to make dua. When you're uh, on the peaks of Safa and Marwa, uh, when you're stoning, after stoning the Jamarats at Hajj, uh, standing on the plains of Arafah, whenever you go to Amra and Hajj, uh, when you're out fi sabilillah, when you're out on the path of Jihad, the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, when traveling just before breaking your fast, when you hear the crowing rooster, when visiting the sick, when you're sick, just before Dhuhr, and when you are present when somebody is uh, is dying mm. and their soul and their soul leaves them so there's a there's a lot lot of uh, a lot of times and one given one is in salah exactly subhanallah you did know. i write that down i said uh, uh, dua ibad, yani, subhanallah this is something ah, that, the says. Yeah, okay. that the dua is the, like the, the brains of of ibadah right exactly in, in salah uh, you make there's lots of dua in salah actually subhanallah and uh, to add that when he makes a jude. Yes. Exactly. I've that written it here. I forgot to mention it. Yeah. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, uh, just to expand on that, uh, the, the, there's also the dua that you make after finishing the tashahud before you uh, say the, uh, the the final salam. And also immediately after the salah also is a, is a good time to make dua because your dua is accepted. Uh, so those are the best times, inshallah. I hope that answers the brother's question. We can't give all the evidences because we'll be here till tomorrow. Right. <laughs> so going back to what we were talking about before the uh, before the break about uh, associating others with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala when uh, making du'a and why people do it. And you said that people feel like they're not good enough and they need someone to make wasd for them or intercession or some kind of you know. Uh, and that is, I would say, very strange. Uh, it's a Christian concept, actually, subhanAllah. Because that's the whole uh, Christianity is based on this, you know, that you know, we are not good enough to reach God. And therefore, uh, you know, Jesus came in and kind of made, you know, they have that diagram that, you know, here's you, here's God, and they make a bridge, you know, and they say that that is you know, Jesus, right? Or Jesus' death. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. It's a very, uh, you know, weird concept. And um, um, the, the thing is that, one brother asked you know, a very interesting question. He said, imagine that you are in the presence of some royalty, right? And you want to see them. You want to talk to them, right? It's, it's your, you, know, you want to talk to them. You want to ask them something. And that person says to you, you know, sorry, uh, you're not worthy enough to be in my presence. Talk to my secretary. You know? What would you think of that person? And I always ask Christians that, or I always ask also the people who think the same type of mentality, have the same type of mentality. What would you think about that person? Oh, you know, 
متكبر يعني how come how, why can I not reach them you know I said how, how about Allah it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how, no matter how dirty you are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is always ready يعني, to, for you to turn to him you know there's, there's no need to have anything or anyone to do it for you you go straight today you have people يعني, calling and paying someone to make istikhara for them or something you know you have so many TV shows in some countries where you know it's like can you make istikhara for me for this I mean like or make da for me for this. How much? Oh, just, you know, this much or something. You know? so I mean, you know, weird stuff, you know? Or even like pr- praying if salah. A, if it's regular dua, after the show, it's uh, $5. However, if you want me to wake up in the middle of the night, that'll be $100. <laughs> <laughs> it's like special. And even you know, making salah for them, like I miss some salah or, or, or this or that, you know, making salah. There's, there's these kind of you know, La things. Ilaha illallah. And it's been like call, you know, call. Like the guy's picking up the phone. He got, it's like hotline, you know? So, I don't know. So, I, I don't know if you've, uh, you're from Canada, so you might have had, is you have those 1-800 numbers where you have the, the person who's telling your fortune? Yeah, yeah, is it like yeah, that? Yeah, they have, yeah, yeah, something like that, exactly. Yeah, let me know for your, for your tarot reading. <laughs> something like that, yeah. <laughs> they read the tarot cards, you know? I would be that, Allah yeah. Mustan. May Allah protect us from this. Yeah, yeah. La ilaha illallah. So, I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is yani, we just have to call upon Him. And not, He doesn't say, I'm just yani, listening or I'm here. He will respond. Mm. Right? Like he actually responds. So people go and asking for, for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't respond. They don't hear as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. You know? yeah. And even if they would hear, they cannot answer. Exactly. You know? Subhanallah. So I mean, people, that's one thing that people need to fix. Because we're lacking. And you know, this, it's a very, you know, as I said, it's, it's, it's a very close relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you're invoking Him, where you are, you know, you're admitting your sins to Him, where you're calling upon Him, when you're... Uh, confessing to him you know i remember as as you know before when i was young you know I used to go to the priest and you're like you're confessing to the priest you know and you're saying i mean well, how does that work and you know we we actually <laughs> used to ask us what you're and we're like we used to lie in the confession you know and like, it's like did you do this and like nope <laughs> it's like what's going on you know uh, how can you tell you yani, someone you know this is something very personal it's between you and allah you do as you know uh, your your complaints, your everything is you know between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah for Islam. Alhamdulillah. So um, let's move on to some of the other etiquettes of, of the dua. Yeah, just b- before we do that, actually uh, this reminds me I have another verse here also also on the same on the same mm-hmm. vein. And uh, this is uh, uh, just after the ayat of uh, fasting in Surah Al-Baqarah. Hmm. Uh, Allah says, And when my servants ask you concerning me, indeed I am near. I respond to the invocation of the supplicant whenever he calls on me. So let them respond to me by, for example, by obedience. And believe in me that they may, that may be right, rightly guided. This is absolutely clear. You don't, need, uh, you don't need somebody to explain that to you. Um, a lot of the times uh, in similar ayat when when Allah is uh, sa- is responding to a question that has been posed by the the mushrikeen or the the ahlul kitab he will say and when they ask you concerning such and such he will respond by saying say so and so but in this particular ayah he doesn't mm. he doesn't even have the say uh, and the significance of this rhetorical significance is that he is removing any barrier between you and him Allah. with regard to the dua and show, show the clothes exactly closer. he removes even the word he removes in the word because usually in the ayah is fa idha, if they ask you concerning yeah, so, okay. so such and such Fain so the word kul is not even here okay so that's that's another benefit inshallah we have to cut you because we have a phone call not you personally but your speech yeah. assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah uh, can I speak to Mr. Jibreel? Speaking. Uh, uh, how are you, Mr. Jibreel? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. With you, Sami. Who is that? Zira. Mashallah. Uh, I want to ask about if there, if there are uh, many places or places better than places to accept the dua. Okay, this is Samir. Ah, Samir from Fujira. Mashallah. Okay. <laughs> I was with him just not too long ago. <laughs> I want to ask about if there are places are better than places for accept dua. Okay. Um, yeah, I, yeah. And uh, about the ayah, about the ayah of Hunalika uh, da'a Zakariya Rabba. What is the meaning of Hunalika uh, da'a Zakariya Rabba? This is meaning the time or the place? 
اوكي جزاك الله خير اوكي جزاك الله اوكي بارك الله فيك جزاك الله خير so the brother had two questions the uh, the first question i can answer um, the places the best places would be uh, we mentioned one in your sujood uh, two for example inside the kaaba uh, three uh, on the plains of arafat four uh, while standing on safa and marwa uh, five while making tawaf for example and there are other blessed places when you are uh, uh when you're when you're performing worship that your dua is more you said at arafah arafah right as well during hajj standing standing, standing on the plains of, of arafah yeah, so these these are the hajj. places um you know for but there's a very very good good chance, chance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and better in terms of the other i think he was asking about zakaria i don't yeah. know the answer to this whether uh, it's the time or the, uh, or the or the place from the the tafsir that i looked at he was actually uh he was in uh, Qiyam. He was he was praying uh, at night in his mihrab, and he was secluded from uh, from the people. So Allah uh, Almighty, but uh, without a doubt, in Qiyam, mm. uh, this is an amazing time to make du'a to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Um, so also he was at that time, as we know, yani in the in the Jerusalem area in the in Quds, yani, which is also a blessed place and uh, one of the uh, blessed places of, of Islam. Uh, but from what I know, and Allah, Allah knows best, and I'm not saying this is the way it is, but I, I remember uh, because there's a linguistic uh, uh, when uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he's saying um, to give him some signs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about uh, um, he will not be able to speak in that uh, three, uh, three nights consecutive. And uh, so it's, it's actually related to Nida and Khafiya. That is used in uh, in the best. Allah uh, Just uh, the uh, the story of Zakaria and his du'a to Allah is mentioned in Surah Al Imran and yes, uh, Surah, Surah Maryam. Maryam yeah. In fact, those ayat are basically in the Quran uh, two of the perfect places where you can learn the manners of making du'a. Making Just read the first page of Surah Maryam, mm. and you will see how is uh, Zakaria's manners making, towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in making uh, making his dua he uh, for example he first he praises allah uh, by saying i have never been uh, left wanting whenever i made dua uh, to you then he he hum humiliates himself he humbles himself and complains to allah of his weakness and his need of allah and then he he is asking secretly because he's in qiyam yes. at night and it's uh, it's uh, it's allah says nida nida un khafi i mean it's like He's, uh, he's 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 making dua silently but he's like screaming out Sorry. out of sincerity I just look at this don't scream at me i have to cut you again uh, we have a phone call again assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa rahmatullah wa rahmatullah wa rahmatullah wa rahmatullah wa rahmatullah wa Uh, brother, uh, hadith uh, dua mukh al-ibadah, hadha ba'if, hadith ba'if. Okay. It's, it's narrated by Anas and it's ba'if. Okay. Um, and the correct uh, hadith, insha'Allah, is dua huwa al-ibadah. Dua huwa al-ibadah. Jazakallah. Insha'Allah. Barakallahu fiqh. And it's uh, just to point out, sir. Jazakallah khair. Jazakumullah khair. That's a good, uh, a good observation. Yes. Exactly. And I think in general the meaning is uh, is the both, uh, both the same. That yeah. the dua is the epitome and the fundamental basis of yes. all acts of worship. Yes. Any act of worship, even if you are not explicitly asking Allah, you are implicitly asking for some reward so, from Him, or so. and you're uh, asking protection from yes. His. His anger and his punishment. Uh, for example, uh, an, Im uh, an example of an implicit dua is the dua of Yunus. Hmm. La ilaha illa ant subhanaka inni kuntu min al-dhalimeen. Yeah? What a beautiful. He, he just says two things. He, uh, he praises Allah and affirms the, his oneness. And then he says, I am from the wrongdoers. The implicit, the implicit part of the dua, he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. Hmm. Yeah? Uh, moving on, where were we actually? We're talking about the etiquettes 
And we're talking about Zachariah. Yeah, okay. So then, now Zachariah, he's uh, just the, the syntax of that ayah, Nida and Khafiya. Yeah. He's, he's asking in a, uh, silently, he's asking in secret, he, but he's pouring his heart out to Allah oh. subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's, he's basically screaming uh, uh, of his... Uh, yes, khushu, yeah. Exactly, like khushu, like exactly. Hardcore khushu. Exactly, exactly. And then what happens, basically, uh, the way it transitions is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives his answer. And here's, an, here's another example where there's absolutely no intermediary. The next answer where Allah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the dua says, he says, Ya Zakariya. Ya Zakariya. He doesn't even say Allah said or the angel said. Mm. Immediately goes to Ya Zakariya. Allah it's is the directing immediate. Directly. Exactly, it's exactly. Fine. So it, it removes any barriers between the asking and the answer of yes. Allah. Fine. If you follow the etiquettes of dua. So those are two places where you want to learn. You can learn it from the Quran, the etiquettes of dua. Everything, everything, everything in Islam has a basis has a basis in the Quran. Another place where you can learn the etiquettes of dua is Surah Al Fatiha. Yeah, you're commanded to uh, you're commanded to uh, say this say this dua. Surah Al Fatiha is a dua, 17 times a day. And it is the best dua because we've been commanded to say it. For 17 so times a day times, yeah. and, it's and it's asking for the best thing in, uh, that anybody can ask for it is guidance <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Inshallah. so we're going to take a, a short break inshallah again we remind our viewers to uh, call us give us a call the number is on the screen we'll see you in a bit assalamu alaikum a chance to gain reward i will spend on you he says يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا حي يا قيوم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين اللهم أحسن عاقبتنا في الأمور كلها وأجرنا من خزي الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا واجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر try to recap what we do here at Huda TV for the past week and we try to share with you some of the latest news that is happening behind the scenes here at the station. Living Islam would love a cooking show to be aired for Arabic dishes. Also more programs for children regarding manners. We want to go ahead and take a look at our YouTube page right now and see how it looks as, as it stands. Well, I'm on the screen right now but I'm not on TV. I'm actually uh, through YouTube, as you can see right there. It's the same exact thing that you see on TV here live. It's exactly the same thing that is on our YouTube page through our live streaming. A great way to stay in touch with us. My first uh, time to call uh, Huda TV, but uh, I like it uh, too much. Because there is no program in Huda TV that it is not important for our Muslims, inshallah. Uh -huh. A time to please Allah, a chance to gain reward. I will spend on you, he says. Bismillah oh. ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. We're getting a lot of phone calls, alhamdulillah. Uh, because it is uh, an excellent topic. It is uh, very, I, I love making dua. Like, I, I don't know, it's like, where you're driving, you're walking, you know, always, and you can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can, you can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why, you know, people used to ask me, you guys only pray five times a day. You know, some people used to say, Do they, they actually say you only pray? <laughs> they usually say that that's too much. 
Yeah. And, and the funny, the, the people who are actually saying this, you only pay five times a day, are probably the ones who like, do it like once themselves. Yeah, once so, a week. That's what they're saying. Or guys, maybe before they go to sleep or something. You know, yeah, I can you. pray to God anytime, you know. Or dinner time, you know, on the table. Let's say grace before right, we eat the food. Right, that's, and that's it. And the guy said, you pray too much. You don't pray enough. Subhanallah. So, I have a colleague of mine, he's like, he's like, I'm tired today. I'm like, come on, man, why? He's like, I woke up too early. I'm like, what time? He's like, six. I'm like, I woke up at four o'clock for Fajr. He's like, well, I can pray anytime I want. I said, you pray when you want. We pray when God wants us to. I have the, pray, like, I have the prayer of self-desires. <laughs> I you know pray what he said to me? I pray when it pleases me. Mine's better. He's like, mine's better. I'm like, okay. I pray when it pleases me, not when it pleases God. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> funny. He's like, mine's better. I'm like, okay. Anyway, back to... Uh, <laughs> SubhanAllah. To do a... SubhanAllah. Allahumma barik lana. Uh, so basically, we've covered uh, sort of the major aspects, the major adab of dua. Just to sort of summarize, uh, if you take just this away from the, the, the episode, you'll have basically the gist of it. The first is uh, tawheed. Uh, the second is uh, sincerity, i.e. You, uh, you want to be sincere in, your, in, ma in making dua. And that has three aspects to it. One is that you would make a dua in, in, uh, in secret as much as possible and not try to show off. Uh, two, you would ask with, uh, with presence, presence, of, uh, presence of mind when you're making dua uh, and not absent-mindedly. And the third is that you would, you would make dua in an, a, a moderate voice, not loud and not uh, completely, completely silent. I mean, you, you can't okay. like scream and dance and sing? Uh, no, no, it's not a. That's not a good idea. Because okay. no, you don't have to. Is well, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is a samia? You could if you're a Sufi. So, but I mean, it would be the right way. Put it that way. No. <laughs> <laughs> the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in one of the hadith that uh, you are. Do, there's no need for. I'm paraphrasing. Pra paraphrasing because uh, I have to search through the notes here. Uh, there's no need for you to shout. You're calling on the one who is all hearing. hearing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you. Just, Call upon him in a mo moderate, moderate tone. So sincerity is the second thing, and the third, the third thing is praising Allah, uh, exalting and glorifying Him, and uh, sending pra prayers of peace and blessings, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, on uh, Al Mustafa, uh, Prophet Muhammad. Uh, both of those, the praising Allah and the sending salawat on the Prophet at the beginning and the end of your du'as. So basically, it's a prayer sandwich, okay? Yeah. So you 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 put your dua in between uh, something that's accepted, exactly and accepted for sure. Sana and salawat. And then you make your dua, whatever dua you want, and then you you make uh, very interesting uh, analogy then, used there. Yeah, <laughs> and then you and then you praise Allah again <laughs> and send the salawat again. So this you is your prayer prayer, hungry, right? prayer sandwich. Uh, are we having dinner afterwards? I don't know. No? Maybe you're buying us dinner. I think. <laughs> <laughs> you have to buy dinner. You came late. Okay. I don't know. Maybe you covered this, but if not, this is very important as well. What about the things that stop our du'as from being answered? Have mm -hmm. you covered that? We will cover it right now that you mentioned because it. Because you get a lot of people. They say that, right? Oh, I make du'a all the time, and especially you tell a lot of people that make that du'a when they generally don't pray. They generally do all kinds of stuff, and then they said, "Oh, that time, you know, I, made, I really, I really made du'a, you know, and nothing happened, mm -hmm. you know." And they made their dua and the next morning they're back to doing whatever they're doing, you know. So a lot of people, they have that uh, misconception or confusion or doubts on how come my dua has not been answered then. Mm. So the first, uh, one of the barriers, uh, and this is not the major one, but since I mentioned it before, salawat on the Prophet is a barrier to sending our duas up to, to get answered. Um, uh, two, two of the companions, have, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, and Umar ibn al-Khattab have said that the dua is stuck between the heavens and the earth until the, 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 the supplicant makes a sense salawat on the Prophet. Salah, salah. And these are authentic narrations. The second thing, as Ismail mentioned, is that sins are a barrier for dua getting accepted. Salah. And that's the major barrier because they are a barrier to getting our duas accepted. Yes. Uh, sins, they, they put a... <laughs> They put black spots on your heart, as we know. Yes. So repentance and staying away from sins are, are also one of the major adab uh, of making, the adab, making yeah. dua and making sure that our dua, duas get, get answered. The third barrier to our dua getting accepted is when we earn 
haram, haram food, haram risk, and, and we eat. eat from the haram. Yes. Okay, so we need to make sure that we're earning halal and we're consuming halal because that is a barrier to uh, uh, our dua getting answered. Uh, there is the hadith of the, the, the traveler, the Bedouin traveler who is uh, okay. dusty and disheveled. We yeah. got uh, another yeah. phone call. We keep cutting it. I then. think this is, uh, I think, Sister Munna from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, sister, please go ahead. Yes, I am uh, Mona. I am Mona from Egypt. Mashallah. Yes, uh, thank you, brother. Thank you for time to please Allah. May Allah make every second in our life to please Allah. Uh, about uh, the questions of the brother who asked about uh, Zakaria Dua, I think my answer uh, is if my answer is wrong, you can correct it. I think my when uh, I think. Uh, when um, Zachariah went to Maria in her mihrab, he saw the fruits which is not in its time. He asked it here, "Anna laki haza?" "Qalat huwa min ain billah." "Inna Allah yarzuk man yasha b'gayr hisab." "Hunalika da'a Zachariah Rabbu." In this time and in this belief, Zachariah make a dua. Zachariah make a dua for Maria. This is my answer. Thank you. Okay. okay so, so the sister is uh, saying that it was in that spot, Danny. Um, I actually I, I sort of agree with her because I remember hearing something of that of that nature. Uh, he, why he made the dua like this is because when he when he came in and he saw that Maryam was being provided uh, provided from Allah like this, and it is it is said that it was either summer or winter, and she was getting fruits of the other season. Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So either it was summer, and she was having fruits of the winter. Mm -hmm. So when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala saw uh, uh, when sorry when Zakaria salam saw that. He realized that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give you even when it's not the right place, right time and right place for him mm -hmm. to give. Because at that point, Zakaria was a really old man and his wife is barren. Mashallah. So he realized from seeing uh, Maryam alayhi salam, alayhi salam uh, with the, the fruits of the, uh, the out of season right. fruits mm -hmm. that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give you even when you're not in season. Right. So he immediately made dua. Uh, I think this, then, uh, this uh, reference is Surah Imran. In, this is uh, okay. Surah Al Imran, Al -Imran. Yeah, this particular. But in Surah Maryam, because uh, you know, the Quran makes tafsir of, of itself. Itself, right? yeah. And sometimes it will, it will be like a, it's there and then it, it moves to another uh, event or place, right? Exactly. Or even though within the same story. So not necessarily that the two are connected, yeah. uh, but the three can be connected. He saw her. Yeah. Then he went made and dua, made dua, yeah. and because uh, yeah. that's what the Surah Maryam says that he's making in the mihrab, he's uh, exactly he's in his prayer place. Exactly. Allah alam, and that's what I said. Anyway, we have a call from Sudan. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you doing, guys? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, my name is Samir. I'm just calling from South Sudan, and I can see that uh, you are. Discussing about Dua, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's perfect, and I like it. Of course, I usually follow your Huda TV. And uh, which time uh, do you think uh, Dua is most acceptable? Uh, especially, I want you to tell me something like that. And uh, before you have said something like uh, when you are making Dua. Maybe you might not be somewhere. Of course, you know me. When I when after prayer, I do dua, but my body is here and my mind is somewhere. Look, can you say something about it? Yes. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. I think the first one we answered yeah, about we, the times. Yeah, we answered uh, the this question. Inshallah, when uh, the video goes up on on YouTube, you can rewatch the first part of that. Uh, but but in general, we don't want to uh, to uh, just a general answer. You can make dua anywhere, hmm. except uh, when you're, I think, on the on the in the bathroom. bathroom yeah. yeah, so don't make dua in the bathroom, because uh, that's you make dua problem. before entering the bathroom. Yeah, make, make dua before entering the room. enter bathroom and after and when you're leaving as well. So don't be don't uh, don't worry about making dua. Just make dua anywhere you are, inshallah. If but most important is the second part that you are fully present with exactly. your heart and your mind when exactly. you're making dua, not that you're somewhere else and say, Allahumma, and your mind is. As we know, uh, the story about uh, Musa Alayhi that he was wondering about this uh, the shepherd, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, you know, ya Musa, you know, ta'adab, yani. like, be careful, like, you know, because he was like, oh Allah, you're not answering this guy's prayer, you know. He says, how can I answer someone's prayer when his 
uh, tongue is with me, but his mind is with his sheep. Subhanallah. 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 Uh, from Ethiopia, we have a phone call. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, Abiba, Sister Abiba, go ahead. Uh, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Um, can we make a dua by our language in a sujood? Can we make dua by what? In a sujood. In sujood. Can we make dua in sujood? Yes, it's uh, recommended uh, uh, to make dua in sujood. Uh, and it is one of the best places that you can uh, make dua because at that point you are closest in proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu I think the sister also asked, added the issue of in our language. This, uh, there is a difference of opinion on this. I'm not yeah. really qualified to answer sister, so yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I think you need to take it. But there is a difference of opinion. Both sides have any arguments. Allah alam. Allahu alam. Uh, moving on. Shall we move on? Yes. Yeah, we have to move on, okay? Because we, we have a lot of etiquettes yeah, here. Not too much time left. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. There's about 20, 20 uh, I think we etiquettes. might need to have a... Uh, like we've, we've probably got like two or three minutes left, so... We need to have a, like a second uh, okay. show. On so I'll just, I'll, just read, I'll just read them off real quick so that we know all of the etiquettes and then we can maybe discuss a few of them. So where are we, right? Okay, so we, we're, we're up to uh, earning halal and eating halal. Uh, the next one is asking three times, okay? Because the Messenger of Allah loved so to repeat his dua three times, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, uh, after that is being in wudu, tahara, when we're making mm -hmm. dua. And uh, now, basically, all of these etiquettes and adab after tawheed are recommended. The only one that's obligatory is, is, is tawheed. You don't have to, you don't have to, but obviously these are much better for you to do so that it increases the chances of your, of your dua getting answered. Uh, after that is facing the Qibla. Uh, and, uh, and then there is raising the hands when you're making dua. And then there is doing good deeds and making and using those good deeds as an intercessor awesome. between you and Allah. Now this is a permissible form of, uh, uh, of, of wasta. Okay? So you, you make tawassul with your good deeds. Mm. Then there is making dua when things are going well for you in times of ease. Yes, sure. Because all, a lot of the times when things are going good and, we, and, when, and life is good, we tend to forget making dua. And only when trouble happens, we start saying, oh Allah, forgive me and this and mm -hmm. that. Ask me, uh, you ask him to raise this calamity from you. But when everything is nice, you forget about him and you're just living mm -hmm. your life. And then there's making dua for others. And this is one of the best ways to have your duas answered because when you make dua for someone else who's not present, an angel is put, is, 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 is put there to make the same dua and, and ask it for you instead. Oh, yes, so it's like a you're, you're, like win-win situation. Subhanallah. Uh, an, an etiquette is not making dua for things that are sinful or for breaking the ties of kinship or against yourself or for your children. Making dua using the authentic supplications that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made, made because we know that his duas are the best duas. The best Why? Yeah. Because they're comprehensive and two, because he made them. Subhan. Okay, he wouldn't make it if it wasn't the best. Okay, and if you have trouble memorizing uh, the duas of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you can make one specific dua, just memorize one dua and you're good to go. And that dua is Allahumma inni as'aluka min khayri ma sa'alaka minhu nabiyuka Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa a'udhu bika min sharri ma sta'adha minhu nabiyuka Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa anta al-musta'an wa alayka al-balaag wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah Just this one dua covers everything. I translated for you. You're saying, Oh Allah, I beg you for, for the good which your Prophet ﷺ asked you, and I seek refuge with you for the evil that, that the Prophet ﷺ took refuge with you from. You are the one from whom help is sought, and, you are, and yours is the responsibility to communicate the truth. There is no strength, no power except you. Just this one dua is enough for you to memorize and you're, you're asking every single dua that the Prophet made in one, in one dua. Allah. And even if that is too difficult for you to memorize, 
just say Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabina Muhammad. And you just send salawat on the Prophet. Because if you send salawat on the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will suffice you in this life and the next. And, yeah, and He knows what you want and what exactly. your uh, du'as are. Yani, subhanallah. Okay. Inshallah. Then we have one minute, inshallah. Okay, we, we're almost done. Have you mentioned, uh, sorry, not to, maybe you're going to mention, but making du'a with the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, that, that comes under the, the, the section where we talked about praising Allah. Praising so you praise Allah by invoking, him, invoking His best names. Yes. And uh, depending on the dua that you're making, you will, make a, you will, ma you will yes, invoke specific. The, the specific name. So you will say, Ya Razak ul Zukni. The O Ar Razak, which is the one who provides risk, provide for me. Yes. Yeah? Or Ya, Ghaf ya Ghafur uh, yes. Maghfir Li. Maghfir Li. Uh, so that comes in the aspect of praising Allah and exalting Him and glorifying Him. Uh, those are those are the those are the etiquettes, all of them. Uh, the I, et go ahead, brother. I think we're gonna have to uh, probably have another episode sometime. Uh, Inshallah. The second part of. I'm ready. I'm ready. It would, make, it would make sense to have that next week, of course, rather than, than splitting it into a different time. Right. Let's see how we can. Uh, so I think we can have two guests. Two, <laughs> two for the price of one. Inshallah. Buy one, get one free. Inshallah. <laughs> Value pack. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So I guess we are out of time. And all uh, good, uh, all good things come to an end. All good things come to an end. Uh, khair, inshallah. And we will end with just a beautiful dua that the Prophet said that uh, if you do th make this dua before you stand up from your majlis, from your sitting, Allah will forgive you. Yani, uh, the sins. Uh, سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت واتوب اليك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا اعصي من السماء في خص الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر جزاكم الله خير ان شاء الله we will see you um, next week same time same place and hopefully same guests ان شاء الله ان شاء الله جزاكم الله خير Time to please Allah, a chance to gain reward. I will spend on you, he says, all on who spend in good cause. Good deeds are opportunities, sparkling bright and true, raising you in the sight of Allah and adorning Al Jannah for you. So rush to earn his reward Don't forget the oppressed And when you go to sleep at